In the series of videos, we have been discussing about prokaryotic DNA replication. Now from here, we will be discussing about DNA replication in eukaryotes. You know the replication process proceeds in three major steps. The initiation part, the elongation and the termination. And here in this video, we will have a detailed look on the initiation of DNA replication in eukaryotes. Now here you can see the DNA molecule. It is a linear one in eukaryotes, having two strands running in an opposite direction as shown in the diagram. And also in this diagram you can see a site called ORI site. Like we have ORI site in prokaryotes, in the same way we have ORI site in eukaryotes also. This is where from the replication starts, or you can say it is the origin of replication. This origin of replication is AT rich region, like we have ARS in yeast. The ARS is the ORI site in yeast. It is termed as autonomously replicating sequences. Before getting to the mechanism of replication, let's see what are the proteins or enzymes involved in the initiation of eukaryotic DNA replication. First, we have ORC protein. It is a complex protein known as origin replication complex. It binds to ORI site and has ATPase activity. This protein recruits all other proteins for initiation purposes. The second protein for initiation is CDC6 protein. Cell division cycle 6 protein required for helicase loading. Then we have CDT1 protein, CDC10 dependent transcript, also used for MCM loading or helicase loading. CDT1 interacts with MCM and induces topological association of MCM ring with the DNA. Then we have MCM2 to 7, that's mini chromosome maintenance. It's a multi protein unit of 6 MCM proteins which shows helicase activity. Then we have CDK and DDK. Both are kinase proteins, cyclin dependent kinases and DBF4 dependent kinase. Both regulate the initiation proteins by phosphorylation. Then we have CDC45 protein, cell division cycle 45 protein. It interacts with MCM7 and polymerase alpha. The CDC45 activates the helicase activity of MCM proteins. Then there are genes, GINs. It is a coactivator of DNA initiation, form CMG assembly. CDC45, mini chromosome maintenance and genes, that is the CMG assembly. Furthermore, we have RPA protein, replication protein A. It prevents the annealing of DNA strands once separated. These are like SSB proteins of prokaryotes. Then we have RFC protein, replication factor C. It is a DNA clamp loader. It loads PCNA to the DNA strands. Then ultimately we have PCNA itself, a DNA clamp. It holds to DNA in a ring-like manner and with this DNA polymerase does not get detached from the synthesis site. Now talking about polymerase enzymes. First we have DNA polymerase alpha. It synthesizes short DNA stretches on primers. Do not get confused here. This is not the main DNA replicating enzyme. It just initiates the first few deoxynucleotides on which then other primary polymerase will work. And this primary polymerase is the polymerase delta. It synthesizes both leading and lagging strands. And also we have primase enzyme which synthesizes primers. Primers are the ribonucleotides. We need primers because DNA synthesis cannot start de novo synthesis. It cannot start from the scratch. So a primase is needed which starts the RNA synthesis first in the form of primers. Then on primers, the primers are elongated with the DNA synthesis. So a primer, that is the RNA synthesis, can start de novo without the requirement of a primer. Then we have other enzymes for elongation like ligase and flap endonucleases. Now let's see the initiation process in eukaryotes in detail. Here in this diagram, you can see the DNA molecule with ORS site. The first protein it attaches is the ORC protein. The ORC binds to the ORI site. Then with the ATPase activity of ORC, it loads all other initiation proteins. The first two proteins recruited by ORC are the CD6 and CDT1 protein, as you can see in this diagram. Now the CD6 drives the loading of MCM protein, that's helicase enzyme. And the CDT1 induces the topological changes in DNA, with which MCM ring is associated firmly with DNA, thus concluding the helicase loading. So this forms as the pre-replicative complex. And these all events are going in the G1 phase of cell cycle. But till now the MCM2 to 7 complex does not show any helicase activity. It's inactive yet. 
Now from here there will be transition from G1 to S phase and this transition is mediated by kinase enzymes like CDK and DDK enzyme. The CDK phosphorylates CDC6 and DDK phosphorylates MCM that's helicase. And in this G1 to S transition state the CDT1 is also inhibited by geminin protein. And finally the ORC is also phosphorylated so that it does not recruit further initiation proteins. Now the phosphorylated CDC6 protein is degraded and CDT1 is also inhibited. And in that process the phosphorylation of MCM leads to the recruitment of CDC45 and GINS proteins. And furthermore we see the CDC45 is loaded to MCM with the help of SLD3, SLD7 complex. Now in all these processes we have MCM protein on DNA bound with CDC45 and GINS. We also have ORC there but it's inactive so we will not show this here. Furthermore the assembly of MCM, CDC45 and GINS makes us the CMG assembly. That's the CDC45 protein, mini chromosome maintenance and GINs. This CMG moves across the DNA and melts the DNA in order to give room for polymerase enzymes and other enzymes. The formation of CMG assembly also recruits MCM10 and CTF4 protein to the DNA. And these two proteins in turn recruits RPA protein, polymerase alpha and primase. And polymerase alpha and primase are always associated with each other. The RPA binds to both strands and prevents their annealing. If we zoom into the diagram, we can see MCM running towards the left and breaking the hydrogen bonds, thus showing the helicase activity. Then we have a primase enzyme which adds primers, a short RNA stretch. Primase adds one primer to leading strand while as it continuously adds primers to lagging strand. Because on lagging strand, the DNA synthesis is always discontinuous. That's in Okazaki fragments. Now after these events, the polymerase alpha works on these primers and adds few deoxynucleotides to initiate the DNA synthesis. The polymerase delta needs few nucleotides first which are given by polymerase alpha to kickstart the replication process. Now from here the elongation process starts like PCNA clamp attached to the strands and delta polymerase then associates with these PCNA molecules for elongation of DNA strand. So this is all about DNA initiation process in detail. In the next video we will be discussing about elongation process. I hope you like the video. If you like it give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe this channel. Thanks.